I think it would a couple of things. One is I put it in the historical context. Often the debates are, occur as if globalization is happening just it happened yesterday. You can identify different waves. The first wave was obviously 1492. Uh, the Colombian encounter was one of the massive forms of globalization. Then there was a second wave of globalization in the late 19th to early 20th century when capital population flowed freely around the world. You could leave Central Europe and arrive in New York City without any passport or documentation. If you try that now, it'd be slightly harder. So in other words, it's not quite as flat in many ways. Um, so it's a particular form of globalization that's associated with the mobility of capital, slightly less restricted mobility of, of population, and much more diffusion of, of cultural forms around the world. So it's a particular time. But the arguments are often either it's flattening the world or it's not flattening the world. A much more precise and I think a, a more uh, sophisticated response would be to say both flattening large areas of the world. So for example, major cities now have a similarity. If you're in Shanghai or New York City or uh, uh, Sydney or Mumbai, sometimes they have tremendous similarities. Rather than a flat world, it's a world of valleys that look much the same, uh, but also inaccessible peaks. The global supply chains of, say, shoe manufacturing only involve anywhere between five to ten countries. Large parts of the world, and even large parts of rich countries, are still less connected to global uh, patterns and processes. In other words, it's a much more complex pattern than simply globalization sweeping all before it, or it's, it's still a very inaccessible world. So it's, it's flat in places and more inaccessible than others. Now that doesn't give us the neat, trite, the world is flat, but it gives us a much more nuanced understanding of what is happening in the world.